Dear friends, grace to you and peace. I'm Paul Stevens. Uh, I'm the ordained minister in placement at St Luke's Uniting Church in Highton in Geelong. And this is the first of our regular uh, fully online services. Of course, you can probably hear the birds. We're outside for this. Can I encourage you to think about how can you can use this resource to create a worshipful time at home? Perhaps have a Bible open. And what about lighting a candle as a sign of hope? as a sign of the presence of Christ. Perhaps you might like to do this as a family activity to, to prepare a worship space. So you might like to stop the video right now while you do that. Let's pray. Out of the depths we cry to you, O God. You are our refuge and strength in these troubled times. Be with us wherever we might be as we share in this time of worship and reflection. Assure us that while separated physically, we remain united as members of the one body, the body of Christ. May we hear deep within us the comfort you offer. And by your spirit, enable us to renew our trust in you and the hope that you offer through Christ Jesus. We also confess in this time of prayer the reality of our living, that we have not loved you or our neighbour with the kind of love that we see in Jesus that unconditional kind of love that you offer to us now. Forgive us, compassionate God. Work your healing way in our hearts and minds and souls. Take away from us what we need carry no longer. And in the days which lie ahead, give us what we need. May we know you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly in these strange times. Amen. The Bible reading for today is a short text. It's from Psalm 46. It's just three verses, the first three verses. Psalm 46, verses 1 to 3. God is our mighty fortress, always ready to help in times of trouble. And so we won't be afraid. Let the earth tremble and the mountains tumble into the deepest sea. Let the ocean roar and foam and its raging waves shake the mountains. May these words speak to us at this time. Friends, in the Old Testament book of Exodus, chapter 2, we read about how Moses, long before he led the people of Israel out of slavery in Egypt, had fled from Egypt to a foreign land, the land of Midian. There he married a woman by the name of Zipporah. And they had a son and called him Gershom, which the King James translation of the Bible says means, I have been a stranger in a strange land. And I think Gershom's name captures something of what life is like for us today. Even though most of us are still living in the same place, I think it feels like we are living as strangers in a strange land. Things we took for granted only a few weeks ago are not the same. I have a friend who went on a short holiday to a remote place and when he came back he told me he felt like he'd landed on another planet. So much was different. Things that used to mark the passing of the week, the time in the coffee shop with a group of friends, worship at church, a regular workout at the gym, popping in to friends for afternoon tea, visiting mum for a lengthy time in the nursing home, they have, for, all good re for a very good reason, all been now prohibited. And of course, going to the shops, instead of just being a chore, has become something of a stressful experience, especially if we're looking for toilet paper. We're even using military terms such as being on the front line to describe the work of doctors and nurses and childcare workers. And as the numbers that are flashed before our eyes each Sunday on a television screen make clear, human life is fragile. People are suffering. Indeed, people are dying. In troubled times, the Christian faith draws from a deep well of resources. One such key resource is the reminder in the Bible that we are not alone in this. As we heard in that reading from Psalm 46 just a few moments ago, 
those, this, this assurance is made clear. God is our refuge and our strength, a very present help in trouble. In other words, God does not leave us bereft. God is right here in the midst of it with us. One of the teachings which lies at the heart of the Christian faith is that in the person of Jesus, the man from Nazareth, God has come to us. And through Jesus, God remains close. Matthew, in his Gospel, actually makes this clear at the beginning and the ending of his Gospel. In chapter 1 of Matthew's Gospel, we read how Joseph learns in a dream that Mary would conceive a son, and that he was to call him his son Emmanuel, which means God with us. In other words, Jesus is God with us. And at the very end of the Gospel, Matthew's Gospel, there is a famous statement in which Jesus commissions his followers to make disciples of all nations and to baptise them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. <coughs> this commission concludes with often, uh, an often overlooked phrase. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. So a core resource for us as we live in this strange land is that God, who has come to us, and who is with us in Jesus, has not left the building, but is right here in the midst of it all, with us. And actually, the rich Christian story says more, says more than this. Could I suggest that if you have the time this morning, you take the opportunity to read the Gospel lesson that is set down for Sunday the 29th of March, which is John 11, 1 to 45. It's quite lengthy, we're not reading it as part of this video, but it is the story of Jesus re raising his friend Lazarus from death. John tells us that when Jesus was brought to the place where the body of Lazarus had been placed, Jesus saw people grieving and was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. Jesus felt the pain of the loss in his very being and he felt the pain of others. And as one of the shortest verse, verses in the Bible says, Jesus wept. This is profound. No distant, unaffected spiritual force or God here. Jesus, God with us, weeping with those who weep. So in the midst of this strange land in which we find ourselves, hold on to the good news that God is present. Indeed, as we travel through this strange land, the God who comes to us in Jesus journeys with us and actually shares in our experience as suffering. He's profoundly moved by what we're going through. This is a deep well of comfort and hope from which we can all draw. And this is a resource that supports us as we seek to support our families, our friends and our neighbours in this time. I'm going to conclude this short service now in prayer. Last Tuesday evening at 10pm, people around the world of all traditions shared in the saying of the Lord's Prayer. And actually there have been a lot of resources produced by many churches to help us during this time. And you might like to search some of them out on the internet. So in a moment or two, we're going to pray the Lord's Prayer. But before we pray that, we're going to use a prayer that was written for an event in the United Kingdom last Sunday evening. That's March the 22nd. When people right across the United Kingdom lit candles to indicate a sign of hope. So I'm going to use a prayer that was written for that and then conclude with the Lord's Prayer. Conclude with the Lord's Prayer. Let's pray. Holy One, Holy Three, for the love of family and friends we thank you. For the kindness of good neighbour and Samaritan stranger we thank you. For those who are vulnerable, hungry or homeless, experience support. May they know your healing touch. May those who are sick know your care. May those who are anxious or bereaved sense comfort. Bless and guide political leaders and decision makers with wisdom. Bless and guide health workers and key workers with strength and well-being. Bless and guide each one of us as we adapt to a new way of living. And may the light of Christ be reflected in our hearts 
and hands and hopes through Jesus Christ our Lord who taught us to pray together and I invite you to pray the version of the Lord's Prayer that you know the best in the language that you know the best. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and be with you in these times. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon